Good morning. We welcome you who are worshiping here in the sanctuary, you who are worshiping with us on live stream to the worship service of the Warsaw Christian Church. We hope that this will be a blessing to you as you bless us by being here. Our announcements continue to remain brief. The only thing we have is the summer book study continues if everything goes as expected, and that will be on Wednesday night. So again, we welcome each of you to our service of worship. May the service bless you. Sally? If you please stand, we'll have our invocation. Dear loving God, we come to you this morning on this rather hot morning. We look forward to the cooler air, the cooler weather. On this wonderful day, we praise your name. We praise your name for the many blessings that you give us. Those blessings are felt each and every day, no matter if it's on Sunday, during the whole week, we, we feel those blessings. As we pray the Lord's Prayer together, we are reminded of the beauty of the earth, for there's much beauty in our earth. We see the beauty every day, every night, in the twinkling stars and the moon that rises and falls. As we do pray the Lord's Prayer, think of that beauty and ponder on the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing, and we'll have our hymn of praise, which is number 27, Come Thou Almighty King. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4, of tw number 27. Would you be seated? And poor Sally. She has the children's sermon this morning. Today I'm going to start with, um, we're going to start with a big word. See if you all know this word. Because this is what I'm going to talk about today. About God being omnipotent. 
I know some of you all out there don't know what omnipotence is, and I'm going to explain what omnipotence is. We're going to talk about God being omnipotent, God being all around the world, and that's why I brought a globe up here. He's not just in Kentucky. He's not just in Warsaw. He's in your heart, and God is all around the world, and he's with you every day. That's awesome to think because God is with us all the time. And it's wonderful to share those things with us all the time. And also, we can find many praises to God in the Bible. I'm not going to read a Bible verse to you today, but there's many verses in the Bible. If you open up the Bible, just about any place in the Bible, you can find praises to God. And we praise God every day. And it's wonderful to know that God is in us. He's in our hearts. God is with us every day. And that can be a big comfort to us. Can you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Dear loving Father, we know that you are with us every day. Let us carry that throughout the week, throughout our lives, not just throughout the week, our whole lives. And you can be in our hearts. And we can express that love in the smiles that we give people. They are very comforting to other people that may be having difficulties. All we need to do is throw them a smile. Because they, if they don't smile back, their hearts smile back. And I, we know that it makes you smile also. In all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Sally. If you'll turn with me to the prayer list on the back of the bulletin. I believe the prayer list is also available on the live stream for those who are watching. I want to begin by just saying that we have a whole lot to be praying for and about these days. Uh, a lot of challenges in our country and in our world, and they just seem to be getting deeper and deeper and deeper. So in all... in addition to everything that we can do for one another and for others, we turn our attention to God as we should from the very beginning to turn our attention to God and to thank Him and to ask His guidance and His direction for all that He does, for all the direction that He gives us. So let's just remember that as we begin and think of our prayer. On the prayer list, I want to start at the bottom of the current list, frontline health care workers. I cannot emphasize to you the strain that these people are under, if you don't know. Our own Linda Jones, who had just returned and had joined Sarah and Janie in the audiovisual department, was July, I was hoping things as we all had were back to normal at about that time. As an old friend of mine said, up jumped the devil. Along came August, along came the explosion. And Linda wrote me the other day and said, I don't know when I'll be back. I'll be back whenever this dies down again. Just this past week, I've had occasion to talk to several frontline healthcare workers, including a respiratory therapist who lives right up the street from us. And you don't get any more frontline than a respiratory therapist, believe me. And she was just beside herself. She was just so stressed. There's only so much that people can stand, you know. And although they, one nurse told us that they're offering places $4,000 a week for nurses to come, there are no nurses. The hospitals are full. If you get sick, it's going to be a challenge. So we really, really, really need to pray for our frontline health care workers that they don't just lay down their stethoscopes, their pens, their pencils, turn off their computers and say, I'd rather flip a burger at McDonald's than do this because of the strain that we're under. So let's hold them in our prayers. Let's do what we can to help make their lives easier, if that's possible. Also, we want to remember those students and parents, students and parents of the students who are returning to school. 
On our prayer list, Dara Kelleher, I'm sure that many of you have heard Dara had an unfortunate encounter this week with a pit bull at the animal shelter. She's in the hospital, University of Cincinnati Hospital. She underwent surgery yesterday. The dog grabbed her by the hand. And if you know the history of pit bulls, I know sometimes people say they get a bad rap, and, and they do. But nonetheless, <clears throat> they're trained not to let go. They don't, when you say no, they don't let go. They just hang on. And he was, she managed to get out of the pen where she was. And I, and I texted with her some last night. Scott Morgan called, texted this morning and said he'd talked with her. And she's doing well. She's undergone surgery and hopes to be home tomorrow. So let's keep Derry in our prayers. She's very active in the community, in shelter work. And she comes to our seekers group and we hope that she will recover quickly. Garrett and Delaney Warman, Myra Newman, added to ask us to add them to the prayer list. Jared Barton, any change there, Kathy? Okay. Okay. Well, we can move him down to the extended list. Also, we want to welcome Uncle Floyd Baker this morning. This is Gladys Baker's brother, and we're glad to have you here. Uncle Buck, I think is what they call you, isn't it? Glad to have you, Uncle Buck. The last time that we, I went to see Gladys in the health care center, Uncle Buck and I had the, had the distinct honor of getting thrown out at the same time by Gladys, who <laughs> said, you know, it's time for you all to leave. <laughs> we left, didn't we? we? We didn't stay much longer. So we're, we're, on, we're glad to have you here worshiping with us this morning. And we want to continue to remember Gladys and all of those here on the prayer list. Also, Dave Bradley, we are distressed, and of course, the sudden nature of this that occurred just this past weekend. Uh, Diane is doing well. Many of us have been in touch with her. This Saturday at their place out on Carver's Trail, they're having an open house from 1 to 6, and everyone is invited to Carver's Trail. And I, there's, I've printed stuff about this. So please, if you can go out and say a word, to Diana to shake her hand to just offer her some condolences as one would expect she has a lot of questions as we all do about how this happened that Dave was just here for worship and went in for a routine procedure and all of this just happened so we want to remember Dave's family Diana and all of the family in our prayers so anyone here that anyone needs to add? Okay, let's call, pause for a moment then of quiet meditation. Father God, we thank you for the wonderful nature of your love for us. Oh, how wonderful, oh, how marvelous is our Savior's love for us. We thank you for that because we may think we are deserving, we may think that you owe that to us, but what we owe you is an incredible amount of loyalty and thanks and honor and glory for all of the things that you do for us, the things that we may be aware of and the things that we may not be aware of. During these challenging times, oh God, we have so much to pray for, so much to ask, and we don't know where to begin, so we just won't. We'll just let you know that we know that you are there and ask you to be with us, to help us with 
reason to help us with the things that we need to be doing in order to make this world stronger again where we can be unified and disease free. It's not a time for pointing fingers. It's not a time for assessing blame. It's not a time for trying to say where did this come from and whose fault is it that long, long, long ago is past. Now what we must focus on is how to contend with the situation, how to contend with what is going on, how to contend with bringing this thing under control. We pray together today, O oh God, for those whose names we have mentioned here on the prayer list, those hospitalized, those who have lost loved ones, the vagaries of life, the changes, the challenges, the unexpected, all of these things are something that we cannot understand, that we can't explain. That's why they call them unexplainable. Suddenly things are going along seemingly pretty smooth and all at once there occurs something that throws us off our track throws us off where we are going. We pray, O oh God, that you might help us to feel your presence and your guidance and your direction in all of those things that help us in our journey. We're trying so desperately to live a normal life. We're doing things. We're going places. We're going to events. And yet sometimes as we do these things, the cavalier nature of our approach and the approach of others is overwhelming our frontline people, our hospital people, our EMS people. They have no rest. They are called into service again and again and again to the point where they themselves become so exhausted that they cannot respond. They don't owe that to us, O oh God. They don't owe there to be there for helping us respond all the time to things that we could have avoided. We pray that you would help us to realize, to take the precautions to help them. For those of us who know those that are on the front line, we know this is no joke. This is no hoax. This is no political ploy. This is none of that. This, oh God, is real. And it is so very real that we are have, facing the challenges like men, women, boys, and girls have faced challenges, not this particular one, across the time of creation. Help us to respond in ways that we can help and help us to turn to you. Be with us as we worship. Go with us, guide us, lead us, direct us, bless us, take care of us, take care of those who are near and dear to us, whose names we know and those whose names we don't. For it is in Jesus' name that we ask it. Amen. Mr. Bob Weldon, it's early warning. Sing unto the Lord a hymn of glad rejoicing. Let's sing a hymn of love at the new day's fresh beginning. God made the sky above, the stars, the sun, the oceans, and God saw it was good. For those works were filled with beauty. Alleluia, Alleluia, let's sing unto the Lord. Alleluia, let's sing unto the Lord 
a hymn of adoration which shows our love and faith and the hope of all creation through all that has been made the lord is praised for greatness and so we sing to god who bestows such lovely blessings alleluia alleluia let's sing unto the lord alleluia let's sing unto the lord alleluia it better all the time Thanks, Horace. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> Work that out. Um, we'll be glad when Laura's voice is back and she can sing again. Barbie will be here next week. And, of course, we know that when Diana can return to us and feel comfortable, she'll be back, too, to join us. We have a couple of birthdays. We'll just catch up on all of them next week, if that's all right. Horace, your birthday was yesterday. How old are you? 33. Yeah, 34. Okay. We'll sing to you next week. Is that all right? You going to be here? Well, I'll sing to you again. Uh, Laura? Betty? I, you, Betty, you waved, and I thought, I know her, but man, it's so good to see you. For those of the live stream that don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about, I'm not going to say one of our old members, I'm going to say one of our longtime members, Betty and Jim Nichols. Betty is an elder in our church, and they've been in Texas, or is it Arkansas? Where you? Arkansas. How's Jim doing? I know he's facing some challenges, but it's so good to see you here. Betty, thank you. Thank you. You should hide. I'll bet he, you know. Good. It's good to have you here. I'd like to begin today by reading the scripture. Scripture is found in the gospel according to John. Very familiar scripture. This is the first five verses of the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. I regularly stand amazed in the presence of the Almighty God. I stand amazed at all of the things that he does for us. I stand amazed at a lot of things. I stand amazed at the power of nature. I stand amazed at the power of water, of wind, of all of these things, of the tides. Just this past, well, just yesterday and the day before, Middle Tennessee, if you've seen in the news, struck by 11 inches of rain in a very short period of time. Doesn't matter who you are, how much money you make, how big your car is, where your house is, if you're located in any place where there's a chance to get wet in that kind of rain, it's going to happen. The power of nature is incredible. The power of God is more incredible. The power of humanity, the unrestrained love that we can have one for another, love and caring, love and concern, love in doing things for one another. And yet we flip the page just like that and it's the unrestrained hate we have, the unrestrained distrust 
for those who don't think as we do, for those who don't believe like we do, for those who don't dress as we do, whose skin color isn't the same as ours, whose language isn't the same. We have both of those emotions that play one on the other, and when we have something that occurs that exacerbates, that means, Sally throwing out big words in the children's sermon, that simply means makes it worse. Something that makes it worse, then it is just lifted up and we realize it. I'm amazed and I'm humbled at children and the questions that they have. At the aged, like Horace and I now, Horace turned 70, didn't hurt, did it? No, it didn't. And the questions and the winding down and you start to thinking, you start to putting things into perspective, you're wondering about this, you wonder about that, all of these things. I stand amazed in the presence of war and in peace. Powers beyond myself. But most of all, most of all the power of the almighty God who in the beginning, in the beginning, was the Word. Jesus was with him. Created. God was there. Stand amazed in that presence of the Creator, the Sustainer, the one who gives us the impetus, the desire, the drive, the push to get out of bed to go on. When things are bad, when the day, day is the darkest, to get up and to go on. To order the things that are unordered. In the midst of chaos, we read the story in Genesis of the creation. Out of chaos came order. How that happened, we know that we have those that say it's got to be creation. We have those that say it's got to be evolution. I don't know what has to be one or the other. It all had to do with God being over top of it. It all had to do with God's presence. It, order came from chaos. But order is such a delicate thing. It's like our health. It's such a delicate, delicate thing that the slightest bump in that can cause the order to fall out of order. Can cause health to fall into sickness that can cause things that we just simply cannot explain. I stand amazed in the presence of a God who loves me and thinks more about me than I love and think about myself. And, and I'm pretty egotistical enough to, to love myself enough, think about myself in the morning. When I hop out of bed in the morning, well, don't hop anymore. <laughs> You know, just kind of roll over and see if you can pull yourself up and get out of bed in the morning. But I think the first thing I do is I thank God. Maybe not the first thing, but shortly thereafter. The first thing, thank you for giving me another night. Thank you for giving me the opportunity for another day. I stand amazed in the presence of that kind of God who cares for me more than I care for myself. We reflect on God and his most amazing self. The most amazing thing that he did in offering his son, Jesus Christ, to us. Here we have this challenging, academically speaking, and problematic passage of scripture in these first five verses. What did this mean? What did this mean? Was Jesus with God from the beginning? Was the Holy Spirit there too? How do we explain it? Perhaps we drop back to the very basic and just say, says what it says. That's where we'll take it. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The fourth verse. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness is not overcome it. That in and of itself ought to be encouraging to each of us that in the face of all of the challenges we face, in the face of where we are, the darkness has not 
overcome the light of God. How wonderful a thought. How comforting a thought. I'm further amazed that God, first of all, has a plan. A plan for you and a plan for me, for you, for you, for you, for every one of us. A plan in which we are trying to work out what it is that God wants us to do. How we can use the talents. I talk a lot from this pulpit. I've talked a lot from every pulpit I've ever stood in about challenges and about using talents. Sometimes people say, why don't you just shut up about that? We're aware of it. We know. Well, right now, every, you turn around and you look and you see, what are the challenges that we face? We need to be able to overcome this malady that we're challenged with in this virus so that we can have people gather back in this place again. We love having you watching out there. Those who are watching elsewhere in the state, other places in the country. And I know I sound like I'm big time evangelist when I say that, don't I, Betty? But I know that I get, I get the bumps from those places, so we know that there are other people around the country that are watching friends, friends of friends, and so forth. We need to get the ones of us that are here in Warsaw because we've got this level. We've got to do the things that are important here in Warsaw. We can't just do what we're doing. This is a wonderful outreach, and we continue to expand it. But we must be responsible for where we are. That's a part of God's plan. Sometimes we proceed not knowing exactly what the plan is, and hope that we're going in the right direction. We try to move in the direction that God wants us to go in. I had this note here, and I, I don't know exactly how to take what I'd written on this, this in what I was thinking. That if you want to hear God laugh, you tell him your plan. Tell him your plan and see what he says. Okay, God, I know you've got something planned for me, but here's what I want to do. Here's my plan. How do you think about that? Well, he may say, she may say, whatever. Okay, well, we'll see what we can work with that, how we can work with that. Each of us needs a plan, but couple that plan with what God wants us to do, and we go forward. I stand amazed that God doesn't just say, you worthless little ants, why don't you just let me take care of you? Why do you have to tell me what to do? Why do you feel obligated to tell God, I have a plan, God, now let's see if you agree with it. Oh, try that out. Try that out. If you have a plan and you say, God, I have a plan, I want to, I want to pray about it, I want to ask you, is this the direction to go in? God has a plan for the totality of his creation. You look scripture after scripture after scripture. The lilies of the field, how he cares for them. The birds of the air. The hairs that remain on our heads. For some of us, they're more precious than for others. All of these things, God's plan. God's plan for you, for me. It's not, it's not difficult here is the key to that. It goes clear back into the Old Testament. The key is this. God says, I will be your God and you will be my people. That's what we call the covenant. That was the covenant that God made with the people of Abraham down through the ages. I will be your God and you will be my people. I will be your God, and you will be my people. How warming, how comforting. And from that, it all unfolds if we can say, the Almighty God loves me. I'm warmed. He is my God. I will respond to him. He is my God. I will be his people. The commitment to God, we make it in Christianity, we make it through the confession of faith that we believe with all our hearts that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. We accept him as our personal Savior, as the messenger of God, as part of God. We are amazed, or at least I am, 
that in God's plan there is Jesus Christ. How amazing is that? That he tried fires. He tried floods. He tried pestilence. Tried everything to get our attention. And finally he says, all right, well, excuse me. I'm speculating that he said, okay, let me try something else and let me try love. And he sent his son. Those of us who have children, we know the precious nature of our children. Would we want to offer them up in that kind of a situation to say, knowing what the outcome was going to be? God sent Jesus to a strange place, to a troubled place, still troubled, the Middle East. We know what's going on there now. To a troubled place, to a strange time, to the son of a carpenter and his wife, and expected him to do the things that he wanted him to do. But the message that he brought is a message that reflects the amazing gift of God. How is it that all this is given to us? How is it? It's positive. It's good. It's wonderful. How do we take it? It's life itself and it's just wonderful when we have our hands in God's. May we pray? Our Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for the amazing nature of your contribution and your love. Help us to ever be looking for your plan in the course of our lives. In his name we ask it. Our hymn of invitation and our hymn of communion. Betty, I don't know if you picked your communion up on the way in or not. Well, Laura will get you. We, we, do, we have to do it differently because, now because of passing things. Is hymn number 114. We invite all of you, of course, all of you, to join at this table because this is the table of the Lord. 114, does this just have one verse? One, well, if it only has one verse, then we'll just sing one verse. Let's stand and sing. 114. Would you please be seated? We come to the Lord's table. Everyone out here, everyone at home is invited to participate in the Lord's table. No matter what emblems you use, come to the Lord's table. We come to the Lord's table at this time. Let us pray. We come to you in spirit of reverence and awe, dear God remembering your gift of Jesus Christ. Through Christ, you have called us to a heavenly reign, one that cannot be shaken. As we eat the bread, we remember the Christ at the table with the disciples, and we praise the living Christ here with us today. Bless us in your spirit. Amen. And on the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he gathered his disciples in the upper room. He took the bread, after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Let us take together the bread of life. And in like manner, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he passed it among his disciples. And he said, drink all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And remember, as often as you eat the bread and you drink the cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us share the fruit of the vine together and remember Jesus. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear loving God, we have had a wonderful service today. We have seen lots of wonderful faces we haven't seen for a while, and it's comforting. It's wonderful to see those faces. Be with us this week as we go through this week, and we do arrive on those challenges, those turns in the road, and remember, God is with us at each and every turn in the road of our life. In all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. May we stand for the benediction. All week long as I worked on this sermon, the song, Shirley, I nearly contacted you about it. Of course, it's not in our hymnal, but I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. What a wonderful song and what a wonderful message to stand amazed in the presence of God. And as we go from this place, may we remember those words that we are God's people and he is our God. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you for this day forth and forevermore. Amen.